Welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. I'm your host, David Kezio Musoke. Rwanda has modeled favorable economic policies that have led to global interest from leading companies. Earlier this year, the country attracted the fund Acumen, which made an investment worth 1.2 million US dollars in a private coffee company. In April, Rwanda attracted other investors to the financial industry to acquire a controlling interest in the country's development bank. In this episode, we examine these developments and how they impact on the local Rwandans. Earlier this month, Bob Diamond, the former Barclays Bank boss and Mara Group founder Ashish Takar, struck a deal to acquire a controlling interest in the commercial subsidiary of Development Bank of Rwanda, which is government-owned. The investment would see the two acquire a 77% in the bank for an undisclosed sum through Atlas Mara Co-Invest, a London-listed entity which is seeking out investment opportunities in Africa. Our friends are coming here very much interested in the Development Bank of Rwanda. We've been doing quite some work and uh, they are looking into the possibility of investing. And what we are signing is really a memorandum of understanding saying we have the intention to come and invest with you. And this is a bank that has a very significant uh, contribution to the development of, the, of, of Rwanda. Uh, ever since, it is, uh, I think, one of the first one, if not the first one, in the country to be established. It has a long history. And it's a bank that has been doing extremely well, well capitalized. Imagine our capital adequacy ratio here is 15%. But then, if you look at the current books, for them, they are above they are 25% which is quite significant by any standard. It means it is well recapitalized, well secure, but also with very low non-performing loans. So the liquidity is uh, quite sufficient. So it's a bank that is sold by any, by any standards. And uh, uh, we want our friends to come who have experience uh, in the financial world. Uh, Bob Diamond was the, the, the overall boss uh, of the Barclays, both the retail and uh, uh, also the investment arm. And They've been in this area for way, way a long time. They've decided to come to Africa, and we are really excited that among the countries they chose, Rwanda is one of them. Uh, and we are happy that they are coming at this uh, moment in time when we need them. Uh, so the MOU is for them to come and help us in terms of being part of the development process. It's not the first time Bob Diamond has deepened his bet on Africa's banking industry. This announcement in Rwanda came only days after he signed a 265 million US dollar agreement to buy Botswana based bank ABC. According to Mr. Diamond, he sees both investments in Botswana and Rwanda as the only start of his long term objective to establish a leading sub Saharan African financial services group. Rwanda is incredibly important to us. Rwanda, over the last 20 years, has the best example I can think of that leadership matters. The focus on education for children, the focus on uh, empowerment, uh, the focus on diversity, uh, the willingness to stand up and say that the relationship between government and business is incredibly important for jobs and for economic growth uh, have transformed this economy over the last 20 years in a way that many countries in Africa want to emulate. I think being here in Rwanda uh, as our key plank uh, in the East African community is also incredibly important. The things you've been working on, Minister, since 2008 to make Kigali more of a center for finance, um, uh, the opportunity for us to do things around mobile technology, around capital markets platforms, around local securities platforms uh, are very, very real. According to Ashish Taka, the founder of Mara Group, the firm that has interest in real estate, tourism, financial services, information and other businesses in more than 20 African countries, the acquisition would mean that the bank would be offered with the opportunity to play a role in creating access to capital for the millions of young Rwandans. Uh, Honorable Minister, 20 years ago when I was a kid, I remember the brand BRD. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's even more um, personal in that respect. When Bob and I uh, founded Atlas Mara, we actually met through our, our respective foundations. You know, we want to do good and do well. So we met through our foundations and then we very quickly realized that our respective backgrounds, I mean, Bob, um, as the minister mentioned, uh, his global financial services experience and his sheer track record, uh, but also African relevance in terms of the African experience through Barclays and through APSA, 
um, is, is, a, is an amazing thing for us. And at the same time, Mara's deep understanding of being an African business, an African family operating across multiple countries, the combination we feel is, is, is quite appealing. Um, and when we actually set Atlas Mara, we decided um, as founders, that as individuals and as families, we are going to give a, per a percentage of our personal returns to our respective foundations, which is the Mara Foundation and the Diamond Family Foundation, which are both active in Rwanda uh, and doing, going to look at doing even more work around enabling, empowering and inspiring um, the youth and the women uh, through entrepreneurship and many other initiatives, similar to, to the amazing work that the Mbuto Foundation is also doing in the country. So we're very happy to be here uh, and in a true sense to do good and to do well um, and it's a great feeling to be back home uh, and hopefully contributing in a manner through BRD that we can impact and kind of work with millions of our people across the country and increase the financial penetration that we have in the country. As the minister said, we've gone from 30,000 to 3 million. How do we increase that even further? This deal will see the bank split in two arms. One government owned focusing on development and a commercial side controlled by Atlas Mara after a privatization later this year. Both investors suggested that Rwanda could become a launching pad for an extension into the booming markets of East Africa, which include regional champions like Kenya. We now turn our focus on another deal involving an investment in a Rwandan based coffee processing company called Kesenwa. Earlier this month, Acumen, a non-profit impact investing firm channeling donations to social enterprises in South Asia and Africa made a 1.2 million US dollar convertible debt investment in Kesenwa. Rwanda is known for being a coffee producing nation and her coffee usually has a tale to tell and attracts international brands. Acumen has announced an investment in Kesenwa, a subsidiary of a private equity firm of Kaizen Ventures Partners. According to Acumen officials, this investment presents an opportunity to impact on the livelihoods of small-scale farmers in Rwanda while building a scalable and financially sustainable company. Our investment in Kesenwa is $1.2 million um, and that is going to support Kesenwa to really uh, expand and grow their business. Uh, at the moment, they're supporting about 10,000 smallholder farmers, and we're, we're looking to get that increased. Um, at the same time, also, KZNO is also marketing their products abroad um, in the US um, through, through uh, chains like Starbucks, um, but also in the UK as well. And this week, actually, um, their product will actually be on, on the shelves of supermarkets in the UK. So for us, it's very exciting to be invested in KZNO. Uh, just because of the potential it has in terms of scaling uh, and supporting more people. And just going back to my point, uh, Acumen is about changing the way the world tackles poverty and supporting uh, people at the bottom of the pyramid. Kesenwa exports its coffee products not only to buyers such as Starbucks, but others like Sustainable Harvest, Makanta, Samtown and Taylor of Harrogate. The company currently employs over 1,200 seasonal staff, of which 800 are women. According to company officials, this investment presents a great opportunity to small-scale coffee farmers in the country. Rwandan coffee, number one, is I think one of the best coffees there is in the world, um, quality-wise. I think Rwandan coffee is, uh, is something that is extremely important in the Rwandan economy. Uh, it's one of the highest foreign exchange earners uh, for the economy of Rwanda. Rwandan coffee touches on hundreds of thousands of farmers all across the country. So it creates employment, um, it creates income for those who are working in the processing centers or bagging of coffee, exporting, growing coffee. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a great product for the Rwandan economy. They're probably about 2.5 billion coffee cups uh, that are consumed on a daily basis um, in the whole world. And this is probably one of them. Right now, I'm in Brioche, one of uh, Kigali's newest coffee shops. And I'm joined by Jean-Philippe Kayovoxi, the proprietor of the coffee shop. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, uh, tell us, um, what kind of coffees are you selling in this coffee shop? Um, we sell a range of coffee from uh, cafe latte, americano, cappuccino, 
espresso, double espresso for people that need to, to wake up, reverse coffee, uh, all kinds really. Okay. And, and um, all these coffees are from Rwanda Coffee? Yes. Rwandan Coffee? Yes, they all come from uh, actually one supplier uh, with which we have an uh, exclusivity agreement and they are uh, in, um, in Kibuye, so one of the region of, uh, of Rwanda. Okay, tell us in your view as a proprietor of this coffee shop, why do you think uh, Rwanda's coffee has picked a lot of interest from international brands like Starbucks? Well, I think the quality is just um, recognized by uh, international experts and then um, um, because of uh, that recognition, it kind of creates a virtuous cycle whereby people in Rwanda realize that you know, there is some kind of gold in Rwanda, or possibly in Rwanda, the, the coffee, and then, um, and then they, they, they start uh, cultivating it and, and they start competing with each other so that they, they also are interested in knowing how to, to, to produce even better coffee. And so the, 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 the natural climate, the natural conditions of Rwanda, plus the competition among Rwandan uh, coffee producers, makes that uh, the Rwandan coffee is more and more valued in the world. Um, um, tell us about Brochure, the brand. Well, Brochure started like uh, almost one year ago, a few days from, from now. Uh, by the weekend, we will celebrate one year of, uh, of Brioche. And uh, we are a coffee shop offering bread, uh, pastries, croissants, and also some uh, snacks like pasta, hamburgers, things like that. Um, we started with uh, a couple of uh, founders, but two main on the ground. Uh, Bruno, who is also uh, Rwandan and is a pastry chef, and, uh, and myself. And now the team has grown. We started with one point of sale. Now we have two uh, operating, and soon in May we'll have a third one operating. Now with two points of sale, how is the response from the public? Do you think Rwandans are beginning to consume their own coffee, or is it interest from um, the expert community? No, definitely. Rwandans, uh, they, like the, they like the coffee and they also like uh, the, the, the pastries. So in our customer database, we have a loyalty program with our customers. We have more Rwandans than expatriates, but also, of course, we, we do attract the, the expatriates as well. Thank you very much, John. And now let me just enjoy my cup of coffee from Roish. Despite more efforts to promote Rwandan coffee, since 2008, the price of the product has dropped quite significantly and that has affected the livelihoods of farmers. However, the uptake of coffee by Rwandans themselves is on the rise and one would only hope that the returns can sustain the welfare of the farmers. In the absence of plentiful natural resources, the Rwandan government has sold to model the country on Singapore, focusing on developing the landlocked country as an efficient service hub. Rwanda scores some of the best marks for business reforms by attracting investments. That's it for this edition of Doing Business in Rwanda. You can share your views by simply following us on Twitter. Our handle is at DBIR360 or just log on to www.cnbcafrica.com. I'm David Kezio Msoke wishing you well.